Progressive presents Forest Metaphors about bundling your home and auto. In sports, three goals is a hat trick. And when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive, you get a hat trick of great savings and round-the-clock protection. So you might be thinking, wait, that's two things. A hat trick is three. But in this metaphor, great savings counts as two goals, and so does round-the-clock protection. So it's like four goals, and that's more than three. It's basic math. Forced Metaphors, presented by Progressive. Bundle and protect today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. All of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. Oh, give thanks unto the Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. Father, we thank you for your presence. I just want everybody at the sound of my voice, whether you're watching or you are presently here, put your hand on your heart. Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you that you are filling our hearts with your peace and your rest. And I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We can sense it. We can feel it. And just slip up your hand if you sense it and you can feel it in your heart. I see you. 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 I want you to stay in that restful place. That place where there's nothing but good things. Nothing but a quiet spirit. I thank you, Father, that all the minds that have been busy have started to sleep. The minds are starting to rest. The hearts are not beating fast, but they're beating slow. And they're resting in your presence. All the thoughts that were telling them about everything that's wrong, you are telling them about everything that is good and everything that comes from you. So it's a quiet place. It's a peaceful place. It's a restful place. And Father, I thank you while their hands are on their heart. They'll start to see victory in the trouble that they found themselves in. As they came in worried and concerned, you're showing them the answer. You're 
telling him exactly what to do next. And there's a peace that's coming on their hearts and their minds because your presence is taking the place of worry. Your presence is taking the place of lack. Your presence is taking the place of sin. Your presence is taking the place of the future. Your presence is taking the place of lies that they have believed. And two things can't operate in their heart at the same time. So you're there. Your anointing is there. That's the ability of God manifesting in the spirit form. We thank you. We rest. We enter in. And we're making a decision, Father, to stay there. Situations may change, but your presence won't. Worry may try to manifest, but you've already given us the key to victory over that. So we don't have to be concerned because the fresh wind came came inside us is resting in us is quiet in us is filling up us in Jesus name we pray amen you can have a seat can you tell me briefly what that felt like and just slip up your hand and then I have a mic person come to you and they moving pretty quick today who wants to share what peace felt like? We got one over here. What peace felt like? It was uh, completely calm and still. Okay. Completely calm and still. Okay. All right. Anybody else? We got one over here. Just stay in that place, guy. It felt kind of like a mantle. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. The peace descended, uh -huh. and it was like a mantle, uh, a restful place. Can you tell us what a mantle is? Because <laughs> not everybody knows. Uh, uh, a man Well, I guess you could look at it in, in the cup of a right, everyday sense. A mantle is something that uh, it surrounds it, but it also covers it. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Got one right here. Two. Um, what came to mind was River of Life. River of Life. And it flowing out of my being. Okay. The center of my be being, okay. yeah. And what does River of Life mean to you? <sighs> Follow that breath. Provision. 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 Okay. All right. Thanks for sharing. Next. I found myself floating. Okay. In water. Mm -hmm. And the water was really, really calm. And not only was it calm, but it was so warm. Okay. It was so com so comforting. Okay. Do you receive it? I receive it. Okay. All right. We got one person on this side. I felt silence. Silence? Okay. Yeah, okay. it was finally quiet. Everything. Okay. Just everything was quiet okay. and calm, okay. peaceful. Like, okay. I didn't hear any outside noises, okay. nothing. Okay. It's just quiet. So did you guys hear what she said? I finally heard quiet. So that was a battle. That was a struggle. And all she did was enter into worship. A lot of times, that's all you got to do is enter into worship. Worship is when you get your mind off yourself. And you focus on the only true and living God. There's a lot to be thankful for. I mean, a lot to be thankful for. Maybe you didn't get all the gifts you thought you were going to get. Maybe you didn't get any, but you're still here. Somebody's not. That's a good place. Always rely on him. Always talk to him. I'm going to talk about prayer this morning. Because we, we got some mixed up versions of prayer. When you talk to your partner, when you're talking to your friend, that's prayer. I mean, that's, that's the same thing about prayer, but you're not talking to him. 
So stop thinking it got to be so formal. It got to be so rigid. Just talk to him. Just spend time talking to him. We, we ain't got to put on no airs with him. Because he knows us all. He know what we ate this morning. He know how fast we drove this morning. <laughs> anyway, let me go ahead and finish strong. Y'all ready to finish strong? Y'all ready to finish strong? Let's finish strong. All right, let's read this one together. This, this, this is my favorite for this series. Uh, let's, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 in Amplified. Let's read it together. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Give me, me a quick answer. What, what, how do children think? I said, you can say it, I'll just repeat it. Impulsive, Impulsive. okay. Selfish. Say again? Selfish. Selfish. What else? Absolute. 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 Uh-oh, uh-oh, she's starting to melt now, see? See, I, I was letting you let pass for a little while. Okay, absolute. It has to be this way. It can't be no other way. What else? <laughs> they want it now. Short-sided. Short-sided. Short-sighted. I prayed about something, and two days later, it still hadn't manifested. The whiny, uh oh. Alright, let's talk about adults then. <laughs> Do you see any blending in there? Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. What 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 did y'all see the blending in with the children and the adults? Whinings. Whinings. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. This side is okay. Absolute. Short sided, okay. Want it now. Selfish. Impulsive. Whoa. Alright, well let's see whether we can grow up. Fair enough. Can, can, can we grow ahead of time? So let's reestablish a healthy relationship with God. This is my version of prayer. Now, now let's, let's take a look at this. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, in the Amplified, it says, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. The time of his return. So since we don't know when that's going to be. Because it hadn't been spoken yet. See God hadn't spoken. Jesus come. So we got time. But I mean time meaning that let's keep busy. Because God gave me a word for 2022. I'm just going to tell you what it is. But I'm not going to minister on it. It's called now. Uh oh. Uh oh. So if it's now. Then what happens to procrastination? What happens to lack? What happened to sickness? What happens to defeat? Because he said now. I love mine. Y'all ought to try it sometime. Mind your own business. See what happened. But now to try it. I, you, you definitely. I, I know you one that I know need to try it. Okay. <laughs> but now there's somebody in the audience that I always pick on because y'all just don't know what she does to me. See, I get to pick on her publicly, but she come after me privately. You see what I'm saying? So I just want to let y'all know. That's who Benetta is. Everybody here knows her. You out there probably know her. Because she got issues. All right? It's called picking on people. But, 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 but she's maturing and I'm mature. I'm going to stop talking about her just for the day. But you have to be convinced and confident of this very thing. That he which begun a good work. Do, do you see that? In, y'all let me know if you see it anywhere in there where he begun a bad work. So when you call yourself jacked up and bad, I, I can't find it. It says when you try to go to him and tell him about what you've done, he has no remembrance of it. So you got to dig deep. But what happens if we learn how to pray? Now, we talked about dying to self. That, that was stage number one. Now, this is part of prayer. You got to die to yourself. Y'all remember I went over this on Thursday night for y'all that were packing gifts and all that. And I know you were paying attention. <laughs> we talked about you don't have to do everything you feel. That's what adults would do. They don't do everything they feel. Do we have to always be seen? You don't have to always be seen. But children, when they see something, they, they, they come after it and they show it to you and you got to stop everything that you're doing and you got to watch it. Am I lying on anybody? And children always pick the time that you're the most busy and when you got to get stuff done. Am I lying on anybody? Can we just let someone else be right? We talked about that, right? Do we have to fix everything that is wrong? See, that's why I had to repent. I'm listening to a person talk, and I'm already processing if they just make this tweak, that little adjustment, such and such. But then, hey, 
Y- y'all write this down. And let's see how I want to put it. Some people only get attention from chaos. So if you have a person that's always telling you a problem, that's the only time people will listen to them is when they have a problem. But when you try to make suggestions for them to, to take other steps and they don't do it, well, then I'm getting the attention that I want. Can we just follow instructions? That keeps a whole lot of people out of growth, out of being put up in higher places because they just can't follow instructions. Because I know better than you do. But if, you, if the car says put this oil in it, then what oil should you put? But, but, but no, but this oil is cheaper. But they already did the test on what it should be, right? Somebody who has experience in areas of success, and, and you ask them, well, what, could, what should I do to change this? And you start to tell them, and they say, well, can I do four of the five things? Is that following instruction? Okay. All right, so the number one thing about a prayer life is you have to die to yourself. How many of y'all now? Now, this is going to be an honest question. Y'all going to be honest? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you going to be honest? I'm just, I, I'll be your neighbor. Okay? How many of y'all feel like praying first day in the morning? Raise your hand if that's you. Uh, we, 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 we got three, we got three, four people? Okay. How many of you guys feel like praying, I'm, I'm going to specify, five o'clock in the morning? Okay, hands went down. All right. <laughs> One hand went up, and the rest of the congregation's hand went down. Amen? But if he tell you to pray, if he wakes you up to pray, just follow the instructions. Because there's something in there for us. God never asks us to do something without blessing us in return for it. But you got to follow instructions to do it. All right. Number two, part of a prayer relationship is giving thanks. Now, what happens if we, as CGM and those who are watching, make a decision that we're going to treat every day like Christmas? We're going to thank and, and, and thank, move, and act as if every day is a holiday instead of just waiting on this one. Because some people, that, that was the first part of my life where I was probably about 12, and you get all excited for Christmas, then the next day it's gone. And then you're thinking about it, it's like, well, you know, when another holiday like this comes? But what if you lived every day as if it was a holiday? When you open your eyes first thing in the morning, have you ever thought about just giving him praise for thanking him? Thanking him for what he is doing that you don't even know about. Thanking him that you had breath. Yeah, y'all shout out what you want to would, would give him thanks. If you woke up this morning and we, we did a rerun and you back in your beds, but y'all going to come back to church though, right? You back, you back in your beds and you woke up this morning. What's the first thing you say? Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. What else? For life. A great sunny day. Health, family, mobility, home, assurance, my right mind, clothing, all the food you ate yesterday. yesterday. Protection. Provision, love, love. good health, health. forgiveness. Forgiveness. So y'all, that's going to be a new thing for us, to wake up in the morning. Can can y'all do five things? Can you thank them for five things? You think you can come up with five things? But don't just say it. Say why. I I love that that thing. Fill fill in the blanks. Don't just say, thank you for health. What, 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 What kind of health you got? Thank you for food. What kind of food? I got my, my wife cooked this new pie, new, new cake. Y'all, y'all know I had to say I'm, I'm thankful for that. I, I'm, I'm thankful for it. it. It was vanilla, right? She never made a vanilla cake all the way through. Icing, everything, inside. And yeah, I waited till people went to bed. And me and the cat went down to the refrigerator. I, of course, they don't get it now, but they just walked me down through. But what can you give thanks for? Cultivate a heart that is satisfied and trust God. Uh oh. Instead of focusing on what He hasn't done or fixed. Think about it, guys. We don't know what He's doing, but we know if He puts good in us and all He has is good, what is He working on our behalf? 
but good. What is he doing? We don't have to know in order to, to, to rejoice. If we, get, get, okay, this, this is a new mindset right here. When you pray after you say amen, start giving thanks. Start giving thanks. Father, I thank you in advance that I know that prayer is already answered. I thank you that you've created patience on the inside of me that I can wait for what's happening. I thank you in advance that you've already shown me the steps that I need to take while I'm waiting on it to manifest in the spirit, in the natural realm, because it's already done in the spirit realm. Start giving thanks. What is something you can give thanks for now that you've been praying before we got to the holidays and you didn't see it coming? You didn't know that he was answering something because you thought because he didn't answer like your mama did or your daddy did, he's going to bring something better. It's called work. Uh oh. You're looking for increase. He's giving you opportunities, but we got to say yes to one of them. <laughs> so what do we need about cultivating in our heart everything he's done for us? I mean, if we just stepped and just stopped for a moment, like we did earlier. And some people didn't raise their hand because they didn't think it was big enough. Uh-oh. Number three, read his word with intention. Not just to fulfill a quota. I got to read a chapter a day. Y- 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 y'all heard that before, right? Chapter a day. But while you're reading it, you- your mind's drifting all over the place. About the movie that you just didn't see the last part to. About that vanilla cake downstairs in the refrigerator on the left-hand side on the second cabinet. <laughs> so... <laughs> We can't become who we don't know. I want to make that clear. So if I'm reading something and I'm studying something to become something, the only way if if I want that specific thing, I have to find out what it is, how it works, and what it does. So if I don't read about him, how do I become like him? How do I? So you, you study in a class for a degree, and, and you read whatever they tell you to read. They say 12 chapters, you're reading 12 chapters. But your life is depending on this book. You get a degree, and yes, you're going to get good money for it. But where do we put him? Where does he fit in our life? We're too busy to stop and get the bread of life, the wisdom of God, the insight, the courage, the abundance. But that's where it is. The way you get to know somebody is what you see them doing. Do they, they say one thing and do something different? He said his word can't return to him void, but it must prosper in the things wherefore we send it. But if we don't know it, how are we going to send it? His word is alive and active. So this is what happens. It convicts. He never condemns. Make it clear. Some people don't re- want to read the word because they're afraid that it condemns them. But it convicts them. And one of the biggest words of knowledge I ever received was when God told me one day when I sinned. Anybody in all here have ever sinned? Yeah. Okay, all right. I appreciate your honesty. Some people raise their hand like this. Well, we still see it. Okay. <laughs> when he said, Paul, you're better than this. He didn't say, Paul, you screwed up, you messed up, you done did this 450 times. He said, Paul, you're better than this. So when you're dealing with a situation, guys, ask him how to approach the situation. Remind a person that they're better than this. That there is a lot of variables out there, a lot of opportunities as God is presenting to us. But see, we got to find out in his word. He guides us. Anybody got big decisions they need to make in the next couple of days? So everybody made their decisions? All right, you good? Okay, one, oh, two people raised their hand. Okay, three. So go into the Word. And see, if you don't know where to look, just, you know, they got table context in the back, right? Or is that in front? In the front. Well, what's the one in the back? That's the index. index. They got the index, see? I asked y'all. I didn't know I asked. So, so go to the Bible and, and look up God. Instructions. Help. How to. Because see, he'll guide us. 
before you make that decision, when that man comes to you and says, will you marry me? You better look at the guy. Does he fit the criteria? Now, I didn't say when the woman go to ask the man, because that's all the order. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm just talking about what scripture says. The scripture says, can I tell you all a little bit about what scripture says? He says that when a man finds a good thing, find a wife. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Now, if you're not his thing, you say no. You all understand what I'm saying? I mean, see, when we pray, I'm, I'm going to tell you things about prayer. That's why we got to speak in tongues a lot more than we pray in, in English or whatever language you speak. When we pray, not only do the angels hear what we're saying, but also the demons hear. Oh, he's looking for a, a, a wife. Let me send somebody I know. <laughs> now, y- y- y'all know, he said, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But no, I'm going to save him. I'm going to get him saved. Y- y'all ever heard anybody say that? Yes. Well, if they read the Bible. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's right. It's 2021. Give it to be 22. So really what the Bible says then doesn't work for now. But I thought the Bible says, if you read it, it says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he doesn't change. But go in the Bible and find out what is, how it's guiding you. You know, if you need to know how to raise your children, all you got to do is go to the Word. Say, bring them up in the nurture and ammunition of the Lord. Okay, all right. I'll move on. Oh, he reveals truth. The Bible reveals truth. So if I'm going to become a prayer warrior, I need to know what the Bible says and what truth to pray. He brings healing. He say, pray for healing. Well, if the Lord's will, they'll live. But his will says, now we can pray. You can, we can ask the person, what do you want? And guys, pray what they want. If they want to go ahead at home and be with the Lord, pray that. Because when you pray against what they ask, that's witchcraft. Well, I don't care what they said. I'm going to lay hands on them and they're going to be healed. But that's not what they want. Guys, some people are tired. When my mom passed, you know, we, 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 I didn't know what I know now, but I know it now. So I'm going to use it now. We praying and believing that my mom is healed and, 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 and she's just going to be better off than she's ever been. But what happened was her neighbor, after she passed, her neighbor told us, mom told me that she was ready to go home, that she was tired. We ain't asked mom what she wanted. That's my mama. <laughs> See, we didn't have to take the pills. We didn't have to have a heart resuscitated. We didn't know how much pain she was going through. Because we cared about us. When people are ready to go, let them go. If that's what they want. And, and can I tell y'all a secret? The secret is this. Don't ask them in front of everybody. Because what do you think they're going to say? <laughs> yeah, child. Ask them when you're by yourself. And they trust you. All right? But the Bible reveals truth. So when you read to pray, go for the truth that you need in order to pray. When, when people come against you, the Bible says, do good to those who despitefully use you. Well, that's not what you want to hear, is it? <laughs> but if that's what he said, do, do then do it. Because if I do what he says, I'm going to get the reward that he's promised. He transformed my lives. The way we think, the way we behave. The word does that, guys. If you read the word, your life is going to be transformed by doing it. Your thinking by replacing it. Your behavior by walking in it. You can't have it no other way. If I'm, if I'm doing the same thing that everybody else is doing... How am I walking in this, this freedom? How is my life being transformed? Can I share something with you? This, 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 I mean, I'm minding my own business again. Get ready to come out here. It's fascinating that when we grow, there's challenges. Because a lot of people like to stay exactly the same. But the scripture says, when I try to do good, 
Y'all know it? Evil is present with me. So you can make a decision to stay exactly as you are. And the things will be exactly the way they are. But when you make a decision to grow, the devil is present with you once you say I do. Once you say I'm ready, once you say, Lord, I answer the call, I'm going to step forward and do what you called me to do. The enemy is right there. Now, some of, y- some of y'all researchers, research and tell me somebody that made a massive step and never had to go through anything. So we think being safe is what's going to allow us to grow. You grow by trials. I'm saying that out of my very mouth. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to believe for trials. Because the promise is already there. When I would do good, evil is present with me. You ever tried to ask somebody, well, would you mind? I-, I need you to forgive me. And they give you the finger and all such and such, such and such, and they bring back to past history. They go get somebody else's history and bring it up to you. <laughs> all you want to do is forgive. Ask them to forgive you. But when I would do good, evil is present with me. So get used to That's the lifestyle of growing. That's the lifestyle of growth. That's the lifestyle of moving forward in your life. Because anybody can stay the same. Mind my own business. All right, so it's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, all scripture is God breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable. How many scriptures did it say? For instructions. For, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience. Check it out. For correction. So if you don't like man correcting you, then you know we got a problem with God. When we try to tell God what somebody else did, he's reminding us of what we've done. In the sense of these are our steps forward. I don't care what they did. I'm concerned about what you did. Because sometimes we, we act ugly to folk, and, and because we didn't cuss them out, well, what was the tone we used? Y- y'all know what tone is, right? Yeah. What about the head movement? How, how did we do the head? It was all over the place. <laughs> he reminds us of righteousness when we try to show him what somebody else did to us. For training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will. Do we know his will in situations? But if we don't read his word, we're going to know his will. Both publicly and privately. Uh Uh-oh. You mean to tell me I got to be as blessed in church as I am at home or vice versa? You mean that whatever life I live privately should line up with what I live publicly? Nobody should be shocked at what you see a person do. Because they should be the same. Being honorable with personal integrity and moral courage. This is what we get when we read the word. This is what we get when we read the word. We get instructions about how to live and how to live right. Conformity to God's will. Private and public side are the same. Y'all don't have to raise your hand there, Okay. But do your public and private life line up with each other? Do you have to hide and duck? Are you in stores that you go out of town to go into those stores? <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on because y'all, y'all, y'all acting funny with that one. <laughs> Establishing a prayer relationship. Because what was the last thing we went over? Read his word to find out who you really are. Number four. Establishing a prayer relationship. Luke chapter 5 verse 16 in the new King James says, So he himself offered, often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. And why do you think he had to go in the wilderness? To get away. Because some people are always talking. Amen. <laughs> Curly, don't be looking at me like that. <laughs> He had to get away to pray. Because when we want to talk to somebody, we don't put them on, on what, what's that one where everybody can hear it? Speaker. We, we put it on just so we can hear it. So sometimes that's how we got to get away to hear God. We got to step away where we can just talk to him and he, we can hear him and he can hear us. 
But that's a prayer time, guys. Prayer is simple conversation with God. It's simple conversation. That's just like you talking to your best friend. It's just a simple conversation. And all you do is you talk and they, they listen and then they listen and you talk. But you're both. It's communication with each other. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. But see, with prayer, you got to do it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that is the key that unlocks the door. So you can't use another name. You got to use the name of Jesus. In our earthly language or in tongues, earthly language is the language I'm speaking now, but yours might be Spanish. Yours might be, what, what else? Italian. Italian. She, she got Italian on the mind. What are you going to eat today? No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but what about tongues? Turn, tongues is perfect prayer. Your perfect prayer language. Everybody in here know how to speak in tongues or want to know how to speak in tongues? Everybody here? Okay. Tongues is your, your is perfect prayer. Because you know sometimes when we pray our regular prayer in, in English or whatever language we speak, we can get babyfied in that thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want it, I want it now. What was that the dude name they used to say? R.J. Tilly or somebody like, who, who, who did they used to say? I want mine and I want it now. J.J. Wentworth. J.J. Wentworth. It's my money. It's, it's my money and I want it now. So sometimes in prayer, in our English language or whatever language you speak, we can pray like, this mine and I want it now and so forth and so on. Where in tongues, it's perfect prayer language. Perfect prayer. The devil can't even understand what that, that's saying. So that's your private language. But the key word I'm saying is perfect. And this is, what I'm, this is your, your, your advancement for the day. When you are mad, pray, pray in your tongues, your heavenly language. Don't try to pray in English because that thing going to be lopsided. <laughs> Lord, strike them down right now and watch, let me watch it happen. <laughs> so that's not what you want to pray. <laughs> so when you're angry, pray in your prayer language. When you're tired, pray in your prayer language. Because it's going to be skewed. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? But anytime you got something that can be good and something that can be the best, then I try to go for the best. He said the prayer language. If it's perfect prayer, then that's why I need to pray. It can be short or long. Y'all ever prayed with, okay, if somebody asks you the best of food, what are you supposed to do? You mean I'm not supposed to pray for my mama, my daddy, my sister, my uncle? And the gift. <laughs> Y'all ever been in this ceremony where somebody was supposed to bless the food? Yeah. Raise your hand if you said. Yeah. How long was it? Yeah. Did you start peeking, peeping at the guy to see whether, you know, surely by now he ought to be running out. <laughs> Lord, help. That's a prayer. Because you're in trouble, man. You don't have time to go all the way through all the details. Father, help me in Jesus' name. Or it can be long. But listen to what, remember one of the other things is follow instruction? So if somebody say, bless the food, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Just the food. <laughs> it can be formal or informal. Formal is like prayer service. Where we all together, and we have like Reverend Anderson is in charge of prayer here. And so she'll give the people instructions. This is what we're going to do and so forth. But informal means you can be driving in your car and you could be talking to your father. You can be half asleep and you can still be talking to your father. It's going to be short because I, I know you know that I'm sleeping. <laughs> but it's, see, see if, we, if we think every prayer that we're supposed to pray is formal, then we're going to miss out on a whole lot. Because we're thinking we got to be in a certain place to pray. You can be at work and praying. I do it all the time. Before a decision has to be made, pray. Father, thank you for discernment, insight, and revelation to the decision that I'm about to make in Jesus' name. Was that short or long? Was that formal or informal? Okay. Yeah, y'all was like, okay, in church, is that formal? <laughs> you can pray day or night. And some people pray through the day and night. But guys, I'm, I'm listing all these because I'm, I'm trying my best to take away every excuse we might have as not establishing prayer as a relationship with God. If you can do it day or night, you can do it formal or informal, you can do it short or long, you can do it in whatever language you speak or you can speak in tongues. And, and the only criteria you got is in Jesus' name. What's stopping us from praying? It's real time, guys. Let, let, let me know. 
Shout it out. What's stopping us from praying? If we, we have all these, these verbals that we can have in order to pray, what's stopping us from prayer? Our own selfishness. Our own selfishness. Yes. Okay. I was going to say, I'm going to speak for me. What stops me from praying is I don't want to speak, pray against something that I've already asked for. Okay. I got, I think I get caught in my head sometimes Uh and I want to say the right thing. I want to make sure that I'm thanking him for what I've, what I've already asked for. I don't want to like uproot it. And then I get caught in my head and I just don't do anything. Okay. I appreciate the honest. So for you, I would pray more in tongues than, than your language. Than your English language. And I think you speak about five languages, but okay, all right. <laughs> but, but, but if you've already asked for something, then from there on, you continue to thank him for it. And that's thanking is not making it happen for him, it's making us rest in peace and receive for us. You follow me? So we can say thank you 1,200 times. That's not speeding it up because he's going at his speed for what's best for us. Y'all, y'all have a new God to be like that? Okay, all right. <laughs> In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, in the New King James, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. What what will we do? Thank him for it. Let your requests be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. See, if we prayed enough about what we're dealing with, anxiousness would not have time to fester. So if every time something came up and we replaced the thought, well, Father, I thank you that it's already done. I thank you that I already have the victory. Then anxiousness does not have a place to grow. But whoever we give the most time to, that has the growth, the most growth. But he said, let your request be made known. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. How much of our understanding? will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So if I'm reading my word, I'm finding out that the peace of God is manifesting as I pray and as I give thanks, which surpasses all understanding. I don't have to understand it in order to receive it. Guys, you got to grab that. I I see you. I don't have to understand it in order to receive it. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I had a statement or question. How do you make your prayer flow better? So like, you know, some people are connected by Father God, blah, 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 Father God, blah, 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 blah. Mine are connected by thank you for this, da, 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 da. Thank you that we have angels to protect us. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to flow better without having to repeat the thank you. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. All right. So, all right. So what about that bothers you that you keep saying thank you? Because it sounds like I don't have a relationship with him. Okay. So it sounds like um, not as. I don't want to say spiritual, but it doesn't sound as developed as other prayers I've heard. Okay. All right. Anybody else dealing with that? Okay. All right. Can, can I tell you a simple answer? The fact that you're talking to him is enough. I, I don't try to mimic somebody else who's, who, who's a preacher or is a teacher. I teach in my style, and you have a relationship with God. See, g- g- the relationship with the Father is a personal relationship. So that means I'm going to talk different than you talk. You're going to talk different than I talk. But focus on the fact that you're praying and not on that it has to sound a certain way. Now, I know that's not the answer you want to (laughs) receive. But it's true stuff. Curly and I, you know, it's like we take turns praying on the way here. One Sunday I pray and one Sunday she pray. But her prayer is different than my prayer. But it's okay, honey. Seriously. The main thing is that you pray. So sometimes people get caught up in Father God, and they'll, they'll say the same name over and over again. You know, but if, if you think about it, I mean, this is the tweak if you want to tweak. If you don't want to tweak, that's fine. You, you call his name once, and you just keep on going. You follow me? But that's, you know, th- other people have asked questions similar to jazz. But the main thing is that you're praying. If you're praying in Jesus' name, that's the main thing. That's the, all, the only criteria that he asks us to have. And I got a, a prayer person over there. Go ahead, prayer woman. <laughs> In fact, I would uh, say, y'all, uh, I always tell the prayer team, each one of us pray something different. Each one of us has a different assignment. And nobody prays the same. You can't copy somebody else's prayer and expect to get that same anointing. Mm-hmm. God has a special prayer for each person, like you said. Yeah. And, and, but the main thing is to pray. 
Because the enemy wants us to be distracted by that. Thanks so much for asking that question. But it, it's serious. Don't compare yourself to somebody else who prays different than you do. But the main thing is that you're praying in Jesus' name. Amen? amen. And they even got the slide up and say amen right there. There it is right there. There it is. <laughs> so, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you that you are God and there is no equal. We thank you that we have a prayer language that is established in you, and we just call it manifested. We thank you in advance, Father, that your word cannot return into you void, but it must prosper in the things worth for if you send it. So as we just celebrated the birth of your son yesterday, and we are prepared to enter into a new year, I'm talking to those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior and, and need to know, want to know, have an opportunity to know. So if you wouldn't mind repeating after me as the congregation repeats in agreement with what I'm about to pray. And I just bind that hindering spirit that tells them I can wait until tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised, but today you have. So, Father, your word says, repeat after me, Father, your word says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me the Son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's you, and you just exceed, receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Just go to uh, cgmchosenrva.com, and you can go to the website and find out what j- just happened to you. And it's going to be an awesome year, guys. Just know in advance that you have eternal salvation. Salvation means that if you were to die today after receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you would be instantly in heaven. So just be aware that there are great and mighty things. You have a name that's above every name when you use the name of Jesus. So there are so many pluses that's attached to you receiving Jesus Christ that can't be promised by any other religion. This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.